Hi, I'm Nathan Ray and this is Leading Zeros. Today we're going to be looking at my television studio in a flight case. I have this kind of soft, uh, zippable flight case. It's got a Blackmagic ATEM television studio switcher inside. Um, plus I've got um, two monitors on the front, plus loads of other gubbins inside. I'm going to show you how I made this. I'm taking the opportunity now because when I made it, I put the screens in and everything in the right way up for the flight case. But because the the front and the back of the flight case unzip and kind of hang down. I realize now that that either has to be in front of the flight case like that the whole time, or I have to tuck it underneath. And with the front and back tucked underneath, it doesn't sit very well on the, um, on the, on any table when I'm on location. Also the rear, I'd like it to be the hinge to be here. So once I've put all the wires in place, I can just flip the, the hinge, flip the back over and it just hangs over and covers all the wire. Now this is always open like that at the back and it just looks, um, it looks really messy when I'm, when I'm switching a conference or, or on location. So yep, television studio in a flight case. Let's make this thing. Now everything's out of the flight case, I can more easily show you what's to go back inside it. We've got the two HDI monitors uh, there with the power supplies. Um, and we've got the ATEM uh, Blackmagic Television Studio. Um, that is it, uh, with the brackets and things. We've also got a, a six-way power adapter, which easily gets filled up. We've got a three, uh, a four-way HDMI splitter, which allows me to take one output from here and send it to this monitor, a monitor elsewhere, to the live streaming computer, etc, uh, etc. Et so I need, I need lots of HDMIs. And also in there were lots and lots of HDMI leads, USB leads, Ethernet leads, etc. But I'll put those in last. So here's the case. We're going to turn it over and we're going to put everything back inside of it. So we're going to start putting in the most important thing first, which is the actual television studio, the switcher. Um, when I first got this, I mounted it in the flight case right at the back there, which is really sturdy and, you know, this is what the case is designed for. But the problem with that is the, I had to reach through right from the back of the case, right to the front of the case to, um, to plug in, to plug in things and to unplug things. And these fins are sharp and there's lots of wires and things in the way. And it wasn't great when you, when you're on location or backstage at an event in the dark, you, you don't want to make it hard for yourself. So. Because of that, I made these uh, brackets out of uh, aluminium, um, which sits, which are going to sit here, and are going to be screwed into the actual frame of the um, of the flight case, and that allows the uh, the television studio to sit uh, about here, which gives it enough space so even when wires are plugged in, I can still close it and transport it, but it means I'm not having to reach right to the back, uh, right to the front of the case from the back every time. So that's going to be set about there. So let's do that now. So with these brackets, I'm not, I'm not measuring at all. I'm just, I'm just whacking these straight in because these bolts sit out a bit. There's enough, there's enough giving them, uh, so it doesn't have to be exactly right. Um, perfect. As long as I get a good screw into that wood, it's not going to be going anywhere. There we are. Perfect. And now if I get this the right way up, that is going to go onto those bolts and onto those bolts. Okay, so that's the uh, 
the television studio mounted in there. So this is the four-way HDMI splitter. So I'm going to put it um, this side, I think, so the program out can come from the television studio into the four-way splitter and then, you know, out to wherever it needs to go. So I think I will mount that about there. Again, I'm not measuring this. I'm just, uh, I'm just eyeballing it. As long as this wooden frame is uh, solid, it should hold it on fairly solidly. So the last thing I need to put in before I put the screens on the front is the power adapter. Um, it used to be on the bottom here in position about there, but it got in the way of the leads I was plugging into the, the four-way HDMI splitter. So now I'm going to change the design slightly and I'm actually going to mount it onto the top of the flight case there. I need to be careful because when I have the power adapters plugged in, this is the largest power adapter, which is for the television studio. I need to make sure that it doesn't get in the way of the television studio. It will that way around, but I think that way around, it's not going to get in the way of the TV studio or the monitors at the front. Now, most power blocks, power adapters, whatever you want to call them, have a hole on the back, which you can kind of put a screw in, push it sideways or push it down a bit and it holds it on. Nowhere near strong enough for what I need. So I just drilled a hole clean through the um, power adapter there and countersunk it so now when I drop it, put a screw through, it's flush, it doesn't get in the way of any of the plugs. Um, so there we go. Let's mount that in now. Make sure I get this the right way around. Nope. Yes. So we've come to the part of the build where we're going to mount the monitors onto the front of the flight case. Now we've got a couple of options here. I could just use the standard screws at the back um, to, to, to screw it on to some plates there. But I've found that sometimes I need to take these on and off when I'm shooting a gig or on location or I need, it for, need the monitors for, for something else. So what I've decided to do is make use of the tripod screw, the, the quarter 20 screw on the bottom there, and mount it onto a piece of aluminium strip here and then that gets mounted onto the front of the case and that holds it really steady actually it's, it's a really good it's a really good grip there but I don't want this to be able to bend forward or back uh, when, when the, the, the flight case is in motion so I get a second piece of aluminium and I mount that onto the inside of the frame about there so that means it doesn't it doesn't push, can't push back into the flight case while in transit, if anything hits the front of the flight case there. Um, so I'll do that now. Okay, that's screen number one and screen number two just goes here. So now the monitors are uh, mounted on the front. Obviously they can uh, wobble a bit when, when, the, when the thing is open, but when it's closed, they're gonna be held quite solidly and quite snugly there. I could mount them permanently. Obviously you need to find the right screw for the monitor, run some strips across the back and just mount them permanently with screws, but I've decided not to do that. I've also remembered another reason why I want them to, uh, the lid to open up is if I'm outside or there's a lot of sunlight, I can um, open up the screens and obviously a little bit more shade from the sun while I'm outside. Right, let's get this thing wired up. Right, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to work from the things right at the front right to the back of the flight case and wire them in that way. So the first things we need is the power for the 
monitors. Uh, um, while I'm doing the power, I'm going to plug in the power for the television studio. I think I'm going to bring that this way. Now I need an HDMI to come from the multi-view to the multi-view monitor. And I think I will drop the wire that way. Now I know the, the term spaghettification is from astrophysics, but if you don't do cable management right, you also get uh, spaghettification in wires when you're doing things like this. Well, that's what I call it, spaghettification. So after I put all these wires on and use this maybe for one or two jobs, then I will get lots of cable ties and then tie all the cables in semi-permanently. But I want to do a couple of jobs uh, with this setup first before I do that. And now I need to do the um, program, which is the main program that needs to come out of there and into the splitter, which um, I presume that's the input, one second. Yep, this one's the input there. And then I need output number one to go from output one to the main program monitor. There, there, there we go. Oh, that needs its power as well. Um, uh, we could do with a little bit more length there. Then the television studio is actually controlled by a, um, an, Ethernet, uh, an Ethernet connection, which I'm going to plug in there. Um, and that goes to a computer or to a controller, uh, like to a, a switching desk. But I've, I only use the computer interface at the moment. And then it has a USB output as well. Um, which means I can record, fair, I mean, it's high, it's high def, but it's fairly low quality video. Um, and I record that to a hard drive. I only ever use that as the backup though. Um, I have a A10, uh, sorry, I have a Blackmagic uh, shuttle, intensity shuttle card, a Thunderbolt card, which captures basically uncompressed the HDMI signal. Um, and that's what I use to actually save the, um, the content as I'm going along. And what I'm doing there is I'm just, Velcroing those wires together there, which means if they get pulled, um, it's not going to yank them out of the uh, out of the television studio there. And so they are out of the way. I carry four or five HDMI leads because um, for the jobs I do, because it's a uh, basically an HDMI uh, mixer, even though it has um, HD SDI uh, cables there, um, these come from the um, computer inputs into there and obviously the outputs from here go down an HDMI to the Thunderbolt shuttle um, capture card as well so I always keep uh, four or five HDMI leads of certain lengths in there. So that's a three meter cable in case I need to put a laptop further away and another shorter HDMI lead. Now you can see this is fairly empty at the moment but once I've got lots of uh, leads um, coming out of uh, wires coming out of here and maybe another power adapter there so I can run power to a laptop and things it starts getting a lot busier in there um, but for now I'm just going to plug the um, plug the lead in there and I'm going to coil, coil up this lead pop that in there Okay, so there's my television studio in a flight case. What I'm going to do now is um, quickly open it up, plug some things into it, plug a camera into it, um, get it working and uh, test it out and then put it all away again. Oh yeah, it's upside down now, isn't it? Okay, so I've got um, everything set up and tested and it's all working. I've got the ATEM software controller running on my MacBook Pro, which is running the uh, ATEM mixer, the television studio inside there from Blackmagic. I've got two of these Lilliput um, HDMI monitors uh, on here. I can also monitor the sound um, listening through there, but I've turned that off because it was getting feedback through the, through the microphone here. Um, 
And like I say, I've mounted the integrated power and the HDMI splitter, four-way splitter in the back. I'm also gonna get a box, a plastic box, and actually screw it to the base inside so I can put little bits and pieces in there to keep them safe so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't move around while I'm transporting it. And I'm also gonna get the intensity shuttle from Blackmagic, which is the um, Thunderbolt, HDMI to Thunderbolt capture device. And I'm also gonna um, mount that somehow um, in there. But like I say, I'm gonna have a couple of uh, gigs, a couple of uh, live streaming, um, events just to test things out before I put those final items in. If you've got any questions about what I've done here or why I've done done it here, uh, you can leave them as uh, comments below this video. You can also find me on Twitter. I'm at Nathan Ray on Twitter or you can email me Nathan at NathanRay.co.uk. If you want to see more build videos like this or see how I use this equipment on location when I'm live streaming and filming events, please subscribe to the Leading Zeros YouTube channel and um, thanks for watching. So I just thought I'd give you a, a, a behind the scenes view of a, a very complicated technical setup that I'm doing for an online only uh, conference. It's online only because the hosts here are in the studio or in the room and all the attendees are online, watching online. So it's, a, it's quite a complicated uh, setup. So uh, we'll start with that.